address my first question to Mr. Hirschman, uh, Mr. Harris, and Mr. Anderson. Uh, in determining the impact of a new consumer protection authority, structure and details are key. For example, the manner in which the term credit provider is defined will be especially critical. So how can Congress define these terms in a way that minimizes uh, impact for small businesses? Uh, Ms. Uh, Mr. Hirschman. I think you're exactly right. The, uh, uh, both the scope of the bill is originally drafted, and we uh, recognize that Chairman Frank has indicated that he's uh, working on that issue, uh, as well as the, the terms. Many of the key terms were so ill-defined that, and the powers that were granted to the that are granted to the proposed agency are so significant that it really leaves that up to the new regulator to decide, and we can't afford to do that. So uh, I can't, I don't have an answer for you on how to specifically define credit, but clearly you need to target it to uh, the the uh, the specific firms that are providing direct credit, and not indirectly to those that are providing material support, or indirectly the way the original bill uh, contemplated. Um, Mr. Harris, I would concur. We who are providing a service, or even those who are providing a trade or business that is not just purely loaning of money, is where we would get into it. Because I mean, I cannot think of one client I have, virtually maybe other than a restaurant, that would not be one who doesn't provide credit in some sort, be it you know, a doctor's office. Uh, in doctor's office, even to people who run Medicare, you've got co-pays. And the co-pays are usually billed to those people after they've uh, been and seen the doctor. So and the doctors have substantial accounts receivable. I mean, uh, you know, are they credit providers? I don't think that was ever the intent. Mm -hmm. Mr. Anderson. Well, I guess we really have to define what the, who really is the creditor. Uh, on behalf of the mortgage uh, brokers, I mean, we are truly not the creditor, yet we do perform a function taking loan applications from applicants and explaining loan terms and giving them disclosures. So in, until we define who really is the creditor, I, that's all I can answer on that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hirschman, uh, uh, Mr. Harris, uh, the financial crisis wreaked havoc on consumers. We all know that. And to that end, Several members of the House, including Representative Minnick, are proposing an alternative consumer protection council, one that will coordinate regulatory actions across federal state jurisdictions. Uh, what is your take on this idea? We've not yet seen the details, but we do think that, uh, that consumer protection should be an important part of the overall regulatory reform, mm -hmm. and so we welcome alternatives, particularly alternatives that build on the current structure, that require better coordination among existing regulators, that provide for better disclosure to consumers, and tougher enforcement against predatory practices. Mr. Harris. And I, and I would concur. I think the CPAs would absolutely concur with that. We, we're talking about in our area, of course, is uh, we believe products should be in, certain services should be out. Okay. Mr. Loy. Um, in your testimony, you touch on the distinction between hedge funds and venture capitalists. Given the role that hedge funds play in this debate, can you elaborate on that distinction and talk about differences in how VCs and hedge funds should be regulated? Uh, thank you. So I think I'd begin by saying that the, the it's easier to define it by what's similar. There's only really one similarity between a hedge fund and a venture capital fund, and that's the legal structure that we use. We typically are organized as limited partnerships, and they are typically are organized as limited partnerships. Uh, and the investors become the limited partners. Beyond that, hedge funds are typically associated with trading in the public markets. Um, they typically, uh, in addition to the capital that investors put into the hedge fund, they borrow, in other words, they use leverage several times, several multiples of that capital that the investors have put in to make a broader set of investments. They often invest for fairly short periods of time, and I know that can range based on their strategy, but it can be as short as a few hours, um, you know, typically in the days or weeks. Some hedge funds maybe for a few months. Um, and so, I, and they're also um, bringing the capital in up front from the investors, and then investors have the ability typically to pull their money in and out. And then lastly, a lot of hedge funds uh, particularly trade in these off-balance sheet 
securities, you know, derivatives, et cetera. Beyond that, I, I will be clear to say that I'm not an expert on hedge funds, so I'm not going to comment on how they should or shouldn't be regulated. Um, uh, what I will comment on is for venture capitalists, again, we use the same legal structure, but the similarity ends there. Um, our investors put money in as limited partners, but do not have the ability to take money out for 10 years. Um, our, we, do ne we do not use leverage at all, so the money that investors put in our fund in cash is the money that we have available. Um, on top of that, we invest only in stock, not in credit. Um, we expect each investment we make to hold that investment for five to ten years. And I think the last similarity or difference is that we work very closely operationally with the businesses, with the small businesses, to help them grow. Hedge funds, I think, more typically have a, you know, a distance between them uh, in that regard. So all I can say is that um, the current Advisor Act and the contemplated regulations for hedge funds are clearly designed for hedge funds uh, and, and, you know, for example, require a compliance officer in a firm to report periodically on the public market trading positions uh, of that hedge fund. Uh, if we were to be, uh, right now we're encompassed in the same regulation, we would similarly be required to hire a chief compliance officer to tell the SEC about our public market trading positions, even though our fund agreements don't even allow us to trade in the public market. Mm -hmm. So this very expensive person would sit there and fill out a form that says zero or NA every month. But in the sense that um, hedge funds borrow big money and trying to exploit inefficiencies in the market, wouldn't you say that there is an element of risk that doesn't, that we don't see on venture capitals? Uh, again, I'd rather comment just on the venture capital piece. Okay. Um, Can we touch on the private equity firms? Sure. Um, they are another uh, mm -hmm. unique financial entity. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any uh, position as to how they should be regulated? Uh, I don't. I think that that's up to the expertise of the people on this and other committees. Mm -hmm. I do think there are substantial differences in the types of investing and the types of leverage that they use. Um, again, they use the same legal structure as us, but there are dist significant differences beyond that. Okay, thanks. Um, Mr. Harris, in your testimony you said that CPAs should, be, uh, should not be exempt from activities that are not customary and usual. And the vagueness of the phrase, not customary and usual, could create the exact kind of problems that you're seeking to avoid. How do you recommend that legislators implement this distinction? CPAs have a very close relationship with their clients. And there's a lot of questions that go back and forth on a routine basis. And those are most of these, or so many of these, are small clients. And they rely upon us for all kinds of advice, both tax advice for the company and the individual. When I'm talking with a doctor who happens to be set up, at, formed in an enti entity which is a uh, partnership or a PA, you know, I can't help but talk to him about both at the same time. That's where our biggest problem is. Where we believe that, we sh that CPAs should be come under the Act would be when they're involved in selling some form of a product. So, for instance, my client comes to me and says, I need some help. We say, we believe you need a loan, and we'd recommend you go to the, a bank and talk to the bank. That would be exempt. However, we said, but by the way, we will make you that loan. In that, in that case, we will, should come under the Act, where there's a product involved. Mm -hmm. Can we use like, the example of HR Block? Who are not CPAs? Yes. <laughs> 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 but they do accounting. They and then returns. also they make refund uh, anticip uh, anticipation and, loans, and, right? And we would agree. So that part should be regulated. We totally agree with that. Okay. And if there is a CPA doing that, we would believe that's a product and, in fact, should be regulated. Okay. Um, Mr.